Welcome to US 2G 360 Snapshots. I'm Neil Sokont. Almost four months ago, on October 29, 2012, Superstorm Sandy hit the coast of New York and New Jersey, leaving behind over 300,000 families without homes. Besides New Jersey and New York, 24 other states were also affected in some ways, increasing the estimated damages to over $71.4 billion for the United States. On January 28, 2013, the Senate passed an emergency relief bill of over $50.5 billion. And yet, many affected residents haven't seen any signs of help, even from their insurance companies. The only assistance they were able to receive so far came from humanitarian organizations, such as Tsuchi, who to this day was able to help 16,000 families for a total of over $10 million. In Staten Island alone, over 5,000 families received financial assistance from Tsuchi. Our team went back there three months after the storm to see the progress of the reconstruction. After having been overwhelmed by the volunteers' efforts, many residents now feel forgotten and are desperately waiting for answers. We're going to fight to the death until we get what we need and what we deserve. I'm waiting for answers. I can't have my parents take out a mortgage of $30,000 to take down a house. They sent an inspector who said that I had here four inches of water. Four inches of water. And actually, it was eight feet. Since the news has kind of slowed down, people have almost forgotten. I guess they think that things went back to normal, but they're not really seeing behind the scenes. There's still people with no electricity. That it, it's still taking a very long time. There's people with electricity, but no heat. There's people with electricity and heat, but have no means of cooking. Remove that a little bit, you'll smell it. Just coming up the stairs. Now this is Larry's house. And he has two little girls. They have gasoline that has seeped into the wood because he came up with the water. And it's all in the wood. And they told him it was safe to come back, that they can live here with their kids and rebuild. You smell it? OK, I can't stay in here that long. My relief center, relief center I'm still feeding residents. I still supply them cleaning supplies, clothes, and their means, because they don't really have any money to go out and get it anywhere else. I'm their source. I'm also their comfort tent. You ask any one of the residents and they'll tell you that they feel comfortable enough to, um, to give hugs when you need a shoulder to cry on, or you need a hot cup of coffee, or you just need an ear to listen. This, this lady has been here since the morning after and has not left. And this is Kelly, whose parents own this home. This was what used to be the front door. Front wall shapes. But yeah, the Department of Buildings, Timothy Lynch, says that this house is safe and livable. I ask you to come down here and live, Mr. Lynch. Bring your family in here. Bring your 78-year-old father. You come down here and you let your family live here. Because this house needs to be demoed. And my parents cannot afford for it to be demoed. $30,000. Was a mess. And you guys went over to her and you sat her down and gave her a cup of tea. And she just, you gave her the dignity that she thought she lost. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for that. To give my parents a little bit more dignity. I got help actually not from the government, forget it. The government, I struggled and I had a hard time with them. But I get help from the American people and also from the Taiwani in the church over there. Without routine, without anything, you know, uh, they give us $600 worth of visa and it was open. You get whatever you want. It's not just only gift card to go certain stores. Sometimes I have a gift card to, for Target. I don't need some, anything from Target now, 
but I need something to survive. Everybody was talking about it. And actually, we appreciate it because it was great of, from them to do that. Sometimes I sleep here next to the radiator. The heat would be good for a while and then escape after that. I have to shut off and on because I have opening everywhere. I just make it look nice, look livable. People pay their bills on time, and three months later, we can't get a penny from our banks? This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Then they're trying to scrounge and save, pinch and save, because they don't want to take houses down that have to come down. We don't need anything. We are, people have $30,000, $40,000 to lay out to fix their houses before they get checks? What do we pay mortgages for? What flood insurance for? Homeowners, what do we pay this for? To wait three months? Katrina got money in 10 days. Staten Island is considered the forgotten borough. It's unfortunate that that's, even during time of tragedy, it, we still feel that way. It's been, it's been a little tough. <laughs> Just be careful when you come in, because as you can see, we had to take the floorboards up, uh, take all the insulation and everything. Everything's gutted out of the house here. The slow process that's occurring within the government, and not just the federal government, but the city and state. You know, there's a lot of posturing going on and a lot of chest thumping uh, saying, you know, we're going to take care of this. We're here with you. You know, it's a great photo op to stand next to somebody and hug them and tell them, we're here for you. And then all of a sudden, when, it, you know, when the cameras are off, you're gone, and we're still at status quo. We're not getting anything done. If not for agencies like yourselves, like your group, or, or even the volunteers, or the Silver Foundation, or some, many, some of the many other ones that have actually been hands-on right into it, got in there and started helping people immediately. If not for them, I think we'd all still be in a big mess. I'm 我當初啦,全部借錢弄的,要問怎麼辦?你等保險啦,等到什麼時候?已經花錯要花沒有,等等對面我給你看那個,他他們都沒人弄,裡面已經花了哦,你根本就不會想看。那,這一件,你去拍
We are lacking so much here. This community is twofold. It's a senior citizen community and it's a young adult community. My organization, Coney Island Generation Gap, we bridge the gap between the seniors and the youth here in the community, something that'll help sustain both the adults here and the teenagers here. Coney Island Generation Gap film crew, and it consists of teenagers ranging in age from 13 and up, is actually filming what happened in Hurricane Sandy. Uh, my name is Laura Gottesiner, um, and I am part of Sandy Storyline, which is a participatory documentary around Hurricane Sandy and you know the efforts to recover and rebuild our neighborhoods. All right, you're with me, you're with me, you're with me. So, you know, I met Pam Harris, who's the executive director of the Coney Island Generation Gap. Uh, about a week after the storm, she explained that she had a media program, but all of her equipment was destroyed, her house was destroyed, she had no time to be, you know, taking the kids out to do interviews. So I said, well, listen, we can start up a program. We did uh, a brainstorming session about various people in the neighborhood that we could interview. All people they thought would have a positive story to tell about the way that Coney Island reacted in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. And other barbers like mindful of like other superstorms like that might come. You can't really prepare for something like that. So you have to let it come and that's how you come back after the storm. Uh, they're going out into the field to do interviews, and I mean, honestly, you know, any young journalist will know it's pretty scary to walk into a barber shop and just interview people out of the blue. And I'm, I think they did a really great job. To me, I'm kind of shy, but like, it's great to me because like, I'm trying to get. Something out of Coney Island. I didn't know what to think. Everything started blowing up. We started seeing cars flow in. It was crazy. I never thought I'd see something like that. So far, we've been waiting for people to come ask us about it. Nobody really came to ask how we was affected. They did what they had to do. We need stuff like this. It helps the kids, keep them out of trouble, make them do something different, you know? Keep their mind on the right track. Hey, Nick. Want to get that headshot now? Yeah, make sure you get a good side. Media is a tool. It's um, it's powerful, and if it's in the hands of people who have stories to tell and they're not getting told, you know that really changes a lot of the ways things are perceived. The community is not just recovering and not just controlling the recovery, but also controlling the narrative because we really need to redefine the scope of what storytelling and what media can be. Coney Island is not about people getting shot in the rides and all of that. It's more than that. I so I wanna I wanna let people know we all together, we all a family. That's how I feel about Coney Island. I'm, I'm just trying to make it a, a peaceful place. It's saying like kids can make a difference and adults see kids like, oh they're bad, they're in the streets, they're hanging out, they're partying. But it's really not everyone is not the same. Like for me, I'm in a film crew talking about Hurricane Sandy, seeing people's stories and making a difference. It made, it made me kind of feel good about myself because one, my aunt does a whole bunch of stuff for me. Like I have to do something for her, like at least once. Like my aunt, she lost her whole entire first floor. Like not, that was like that was like a lot of money. This hurricane took my spirit. This was something really, really, really devastating. To have the group come in and give us cash cards was the best of the best. This was the only picture out of all the pictures. I was able to save. Um, it's my daughter. She passed away a long, long time ago. I'm going to be able to go and um, take this picture to a photographer and get it reframed. So I thank you, thank you very much. Her name is Kiwana, and she thanks you too. Uh, one of the things you might want to see that we bought with the with the money, the gift card, is the dryer. Come, that's what we bought. A brand new washer and dryer, thanks to you guys. Thank you. We got as far as we got now, so should be, should be happy. We family, we got some volunteers also. They came to help us out, so we're moving right along. Pretty nice. We're an organization based out of bed Brooklyn. What we like to do is a 72-hour renovation project. We have some of our youth here with us, so they're learning how to sheetrock and uh, have a good time and also volunteer and, and give their service. Now I know how to sheetrock a house. <laughs> We thought that, that all the like, effects from Sandy was already over with. But then we found out that over here it's not, so we was like, okay, let's, we can help out, do as much as we can, so that's all we can. We're gonna keep doing what we're doing. And uh, hopefully we can get a lot more people to come out and help service the community when, when they can. And that's, that's part of our mission. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. And keep on going. <laughs>
As Laura from Sandy Storyline says, media is powerful enough to make a change in communities like Coney Island. But unfortunately, sometimes media can have a bad impact on people as well. On January 19th, Tsuchi hosted a distribution in Brooklyn where one of the local TV channels said that the distribution was open to anyone, when in fact it was reserved for pre-screened illegal immigrants who were affected by Sandy and who were not able to receive any other help because of their status. On that day, 51 families were helped, but some were disappointed, just like Mark, a resident of one of the poorest neighborhoods of Coney Island. This is my backyard here. The water came over there. The water came from these two, like from Surf Avenue, came through there, started rising, came over the wall, whoosh, pushed my mom's air conditioner out, and that was a wrap. I ain't getting no help. A lot of people right here, they not getting no help. Mark's home was badly hit by Superstorm Sandy, yet he's received no assistance at all. Thus, when he heard that Siji would be providing cash cards to Sandy affected victims on the news, he was very excited. since 7 o'clock this morning. He was the first one. And most people here are victims of Sandy and denied by FEMA. And then they tell us we got other organizations that could probably help you. Come here, we still get shot down. They the only one that's saying this for illegal immigrants. Let me take these and find out what's going on. We came out just like the other people came, and they're being serviced, so it's unfair. And as of today, we are not, we're, again, we're divided. One group of ethnic group on one side, and another ethnic group on another side. One person from the Suzuki Foundation told me that they never told New 12 anything, so how did you guys get the, get the story at all? At least 50 people showed up at the distribution site in Coney Island. But many of them were turned down and dismayed to discover the news information had been misleading. I understand the frustration, but this foundation, they have reached out to everyone. And this was just, they were reaching out over here. Channel 12, what they stated was, These, this is for anyone, and it's not. It's for individuals who went through the screening process with the foundation to assure that these individuals did not have any help yet. And they are given the application so they can actually apply. And keep in mind, individuals who are applying, the foundation is the one who does the screening process, and they're going to give back to them. Despite the initial setbacks, Tsuchi volunteers still made sure everyone received the assistance they needed. I don't know anything. What can I do? I can lose everything, my baby stuff, my old stuff, and I can lose. I, I know I have nothing. I have no documents because everybody is in need to documents. I'm the role as a translator. Yeah, I'm happy about it because it's like helping other people that you accomplish something. Because that they're bilingual, that they could help interpret it. Like you guys could get what you needed done, and they could also understand the other people what is the process that they were going to be through and how they were being helped. Thank you, thank you. Everything was a disaster. There was no space. The mud was in there also. So it was sticky, it was started smelling after a few days. My landlord said that he don't have people to move, you know, to fix anything. So I, I moved to another place with my son. I helped myself, you know, I tied myself up. I didn't let it go because it was almost from zero. Uh, my life was again, you know. It's really nice when you help somebody who needs help at a time. It's really the best thing to do in life. A week after the distribution at COPO, the New York City chapter partnered with Shorefront Organization in Brighton Beach to provide assistance to over 170 families, all undocumented immigrants, who first didn't believe that an organization wanted to help their community. Some of them even thought it was a scheme, until they realized that the Tsuchi volunteers were there to help them. Today, we are focused uh, for those uh, undocumented immigrants. People know uh, New York is a city for immigrants. They are coming from all different countries. Uh, in this community, majority, they are Mexican immigrants. Since uh, Hurricane Cindy hit our community, it's been almost 75 days past. 
se sienten mal porque no han podido ayudarlos antes. Doing this, especially for the undocumented immigrants, is a huge, huge, you have no idea how wonderful this is for them. Because everywhere they've turned, the doors have been closed. And here comes someone who says, we are here for you, we're going to support you, this is what we're going to do for you. And it's going to make a huge difference to our families. As you can see, how they're reacting and responding, it's really awesome. Yo lo perdí todo y yo pues, mientras pueda, pues, sigo ayudando aquí en esta... And having all these families come to me and telling me their situation and how heartbreaking it was, it was very, very overwhelming. Okay. Okay. No se apure, que le vamos a dar comida. No tenemos ayuda de nada, porque no tenemos niños americanos. Yo fui a pedir ayuda en FEMA. No me quiso ayudar. Estoy durmiendo en cartón, pero necesito más tribunal. Como no he tenido trabajo ni nada, entonces ¿a dónde? Pues yo quiero cama. As far as I know, we are the first one to provide a financial assistance to them because they are not eligible to receive any funding, any resource from any government agency. Es la primera ayuda que recibimos. Va a ser para comprarle cosas a mi nieto que le hacen falta, eh, comida. Y les doy muchas gracias a todos ustedes por brindar la ayuda a favor de todos los hispanos. Les damos las gracias por, por darnos una ayuda, una gran ayuda. Y es todo lo que les puedo decir. Gracias. Yo tengo seis hijos. Con este dinerito, si me dan, este, quisiera comprarle ropa a mis hijos. No se ve que una fundación budista esté ayudando a, a, a nosotros los latinos, los hispanos. Confuso, porque un problema es salir con la familia y en otra la, la bienvenida de la bebé. Eso como... que son como sentimientos encontrados. Los dos son bendiciones. Como una buena los dos. Madre. Yo lo veo como bendición. ¿Sandy también? Sí, porque todo lo que pasa es para bien, no para mal. No se imagina que, que vaya a entrar eso hasta ahí o cómo es, es como el mar va a entrar a mi casa. Están donando su tiempo, ellos tienen cosas que hacer a lo mejor, están enfermos o familia con que compartir su tiempo. Ellos los toman para nosotros. Entonces, muchas gracias a Dios porque existen personas buenas y de buen corazón como lo son esa, los dirigentes de esta fundación. Almost four months after Hurricane Sandy, many people are still in need of assistance, particularly the undocumented immigrants, because of their status, are not able to receive any other help. Which is the reason why Tsuchi has decided to work closer with local organizations who can reach out to them. Tsuchi volunteers will also provide free medical assistance to the victims of Sandy without health insurance. The aid is a godsend, since many of them can't afford it. We will come back really soon with more updates about their work, and to all the affected families, may you recover really soon. I'm Neil Sokont, see you soon. <laughs>